My name is Silvia, and as the professor said, I'm a recent CFM graduate, and I will be presenting some of the findings of our, our project, which was called Can We Predict Stock Prices Using NLP Techniques? And what we were trying to do is to look at the impact that corporate filings such as 10K or 10Q have on the stock price of a company. So here, for example, we have a 10K report of Twitter. And I'm sure all of you know, but the objective of these reports is to keep investors informed about the present financial condition and the future outlook of the company. And in our case, our group was focusing on 50 companies of the S&P 500 of five sectors. And in total, our data set consisted of 1,095 reports that we scraped from the Edgar website. And I wanna say that we spent a good part of the project scraping these documents because we were just extracting the management discussion section because that's where we believe that the company gets to tell the, the story in its own words. And it's also where we can perceive the sentiment. So from these 50 companies, we use the reports from 2013 to 2019 as our train data and the remaining as our test data. And then, well, as, as Professor Lihal was saying, uh, we started as anybody else does with the dictionary-based models, but we found two main problems. So the first one was that uh, very few words got classified by Lauren McDonald Dictionary. In fact, in average, only 1% of the words in a report were classified as positive and about 5% as negative. So that was one of the first problems. And the second one is that using a dictionary-based approach is blind to context. So uh, for example, words that could be classified as negative, such as liability, might not be negative if uh, depending the context, for example, a decreasing liability. So that's where we decided to use the two NLP techniques. The word to vec model, we used to expand the LM dictionary and Finberg we used to understand the context. So I think uh, Professor Lee Hall explained very well all the skip ground model and that's exactly what we did. So what we did is that we took all the classified words as positive and negative that were found in the report by Lauren McDonald, and then we train a skip ground model on each report. And then we expand if, oops, sorry, we find the most similar words and add them just to the dictionary. If the probability of being the most similar one uh, is greater than 95%, and if that word is not present in the negative words. And we did the same for the negative words. And that way we were able to expand a little bit the LM dictionary. And at the end, we ended up having like 8% of positive words in each report and 7% of the negative words. So that was also more balanced. And when trying to, to see the words, it actually made, made sense. And then uh, we use the Finberg in order to try to account for, for context. So the way that we use, uh, well, I don't know if you're aware, but uh, Finberg is a model, is a BERT model introduced by Google that is, a, in, it understands a contextual relations and it's trained from left to right and right to, to left. So um, what we did with each one of the report is that each one of the sentence was classified as either positive, negative, or neutral. So those were and uh, or like feature. No, those were like the first variables that we had, and then we tried to build some features to try to measure sentiment and word complexity. So some examples of sentiment measures that we created was the polarity for the word classification the polarity for the sentence classification. And then we also tried to measure a, a word complexity. So we were taking a look at how many sentences are in the management discussion, how long are these uh, sentences. And that was something that varied a lot sector from sector. And then after we created this, uh, we had about like 13 features. We ran an XGBoost model. Oh, and our 
or why variable or prediction was whether the stock price will go up or down and we accounted for market returns and the way we did that is like we said a um, time interval let's say five days so we take the stock price one day before the the file releasing then the report is released and five days after so that's like the five day return and if that is a uh, greater than the return of the market that's a one and if it's less that's a minus one and actually our accuracy was quite bad <laughs> for the long uh, short term we have a 61 percent accuracy and for the long term a 53 percent and then we tried to see if we could uh, at least do some kind of a strategy from this so uh, what we did is that we use our predictions as the signal. So if the prediction was one, then we lost long the stock. If the prediction was minus one, then we short the stock. And then we compare to a portfolio that is all long and equally weighted. And on both short term and long term, we could find a, that our strategy was better than the equally weighted. So I think there is still something that can be done out of this, but uh, it should and uh, needs more, uh, more research on this. First of all, because we need more companies and I think it will be worth dividing it uh, sector wise because each sector looks very different. So for example, financials has a very long report, then technology is very succinct. And yeah, I mean, uh, here is my contact information and the link to the GitHub. I, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. 